Welcome back to another video with Notion Workflow. Today is going to be a short and sweet video where I share a very simple formula so we can sync two date properties in Notion Calendar and Timeline Views. We can also apply this to the Notion Calendar app. I'll also just share the Notion formula off the bat so that you don't have to watch all the way to see what the formula looks like, but let's get started. So as we all know, the Notion Calendar app and Timeline View reference a singular date property for the view to work. So what if you had two date properties that you wanted to account for automatically in the Calendar app or Calendar database view? You could create two separate views to account for each date, but today I'll show you how to sync two date properties into just one view with a very simple Notion formula property. For example, when it comes to planning something, what if you had an expected date and an actual date property. We could use the Notion Calendar app to show pages by expected date, but because there are two date properties, the Calendar app would only be able to filter based on the singular date or the expected date. With a quick formula workaround, we can sync the two date properties up in a singular property so that you'll always have accurate and up-to-date information, particularly if you depend on two date properties in your Notion workspace. Obviously, this doesn't apply to everyone, but I've worked with clients that regularly use two date properties so that they can manage their work better. This is especially useful if you always want to show accurate dates in a singular view across your calendar and timeline views, and by proxy, your Notion calendar app. If the actual date is different from your expected date, we can always account for that accurately. So let's dive right into it. We're just going to do a very simple ifs formula, and we just want to show actual date in case it's different from the expected date. So the assumption is you're always going to start with an expected date and then if it changes at all you're going to fill the actual date. And this logic is really important because that's how we'll be framing the ifs formula. We'll start with the ifs formula function and we want to reverse engineer when we want to show the actual date versus the expected date. right? And so the only time we want to actually show the actual date is when it is not empty, right? If the assumption is that we're always going to have an expected date when we're planning something, we want to account for when the actual date gets filled. And so when the actual date is not empty, we want to show the actual date. And otherwise, the assumption is that we're going to always have the expected date filled. And so specify the expected date as the other outcome if the actual date is not empty. So we can close that up. And the way that this works, if you haven't figured out already, is as long as the actual date is empty, we're always going to show expected date. But if it isn't empty, we're going to show the actual date. And again, the logic is really important because we want to show the expected date first at all times. And if anything changes, which becomes the actual date, we want to make sure that we show the actual date instead of the expected date. And so the reason why this formula works when you sync it with a calendar or timeline view is because both outcomes are date formatted outputs. If these weren't date formatted outputs, we could not use this formula property in the calendar and timeline view and in the calendar app itself. So we can click on done. As you can see, if I remove the actual date, the expected date shows. If I add an actual date, it updates accordingly. So if we go to the calendar view, for example, right now it's automatically based on the expected date, but now we can change it to the formula because the formula has two date specific formatted outputs that now the view can reference. So we can do on formula and notice how that changed, right? It went from July 3rd to July 16th. Now if I change it back, now it goes back to July 3rd. If we do actual date, it goes to July 16th. But now we've created this formula so it'll reference either or depending on what's filled. Same here with the timeline view. We go to July 3rd because that's the expected date. Now if we change it to the formula, it jumps to July 16th, and that's exactly how we want it to work based on this very simple ifs formula that we've created. Now, if we go to our Notion calendar and add a 
view. Conveniently pops up here with Notion. I'll add that calendar planning view that we just worked with. And change this to month so we can kind of see how everything works. Title this. So now if we go to our Notion calendar view, we can see planning day number one. And let's see this in action, right? Notion calendar just references the view itself, so everything works. But if we do delete this, the formula changes to July 3rd. And look how that entry also gets changed to July 3rd as well. You can probably do this with numerous other date properties, but I just wanted to show how you can sync two date properties within a timeline specific database view like calendar or timeline view, and by proxy, the Notion Calendar app as well. If you've made it this far, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.